Hey y'all, Patrick here with Tomon's Guitars and Basses, and today I wanted to talk about giving our bass some tender love and care during string changes. Now when you change the strings on your bass, which should be every other month, if not more frequent if you play more, Yes, I'm pointing at you, person who hasn't changed their strings in six to 12 months, hmm. But during string changes, it's always a great idea to ensure that your bass is in good working order, as well as all the parts are okay, your fretboard's hydrated, and your bass is just clean in general to make sure that you prolong the life of it as long as possible, right? This is your tool. You wanna make sure that it's in perfect working order. So first things first, we wanna be in a clean environment. That way no extra dust, dirt, or debris of any kind gets onto our instrument while we're trying to clean it because it would be kind of redundant otherwise. But we're gonna go ahead and take off our strings first by loosening them and then I just go ahead and cut them right at the nut as well. That way I can just easily pull all of them out wind them together and throw them away. Now that the strings are off, this gives us the perfect opportunity to fully inspect our instrument from head to toe, ensuring that everything's in working order and everything looks good. Of course, you're probably gonna notice some dings and scratches and whatnot, if you're, especially if you're gigging a lot, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. So I always start off by cleaning the body. Personally, I use the Dunlop 65 guitar polish and cleaner. It's just what I've always used and it's always worked for me really well. And one thing to note is that you don't need a lot either. This is a product where you only need to use one or two sprays tops just because a little can go a long way as it just goes ahead and thins out over your body cleaning it. Another tip that I have personally is that if you have exposed pole pieces on your pickups, go ahead and use something like a Q-tip to make sure that everything's clean around it, then go over it with that microfiber cloth too. And it's also a really good idea to clean around the bridge using a Q-tip as well, just to go ahead and get in those tiny little crevices around the bridge and the control panel too. Next, we're gonna start cleaning our neck and fretboard. What I use for the neck, I just go ahead and use the same cloth that I use for the body on the back of the neck, just to clean the back of it. Any natural oils and dirt that's on your hands does get on your neck, so it's good to keep that clean no matter what. Then for your fretboard, it's really important to clean this, especially around the frets where a lot of grime can really build up and then hydrating it as well. You wanna use a fretboard conditioner or cleaner on it just to make sure that every single part of your fretboard is super clean because that exposed wood does collect a lot of just regular dirt and grime from your fingers. What's really convenient too is a lot of conditioners usually have some sort of lemon oil or something like that to help condition and hydrate your fretboard too to ensure that the wood doesn't go dry or warp or anything like that. But one main thing you want to ensure before you go ahead and use any regular conditioner or anything like that is make sure that the wood on your fretboard board is suitable for that conditioner or cleaner because not all wood is the same just like not every conditioner and cleaner is the same too. So I wouldn't use the same cleaner on a rosewood fretboard that I would on a maple fretboard for instance. Now it's time for restringing the bass. Go ahead and get your strings of choice. Make sure that you measure appropriately. Our friend Chris made a great video over restringing your guitar or bass and I definitely suggest watching it because it provides a really fantastic blueprint for restringing your bass or guitar. Now for me personally, I'm incredibly impatient when it comes to restringing my bass, just because it takes so long just winding, winding, and winding, but there are a lot of great tools out there such as the Harley Benton Speedy Restringer, as well as this Ernie Ball Power Peg Pro that just make it so easy and so fast too. Now that our strings are installed, this is a great time to go ahead and adjust our action to make sure that everything from the lowest fret to the highest fret is at that perfect amount. And of course, while doing any sort of a adjusting the action, make sure that you do a small amount at a time as to make sure that you don't mess anything up. Now, while you don't need a lot of extra gimmicky tools or anything like that, I do highly suggest something like this, the Ernie Ball Musician's Toolkit, just because there are a lot of really useful tools and things in this that just make this process so much easier. As well as something like the GHS Fast Fret String Cleaner and Lubricant, just because this is something that can help keep your strings clean in between playing and just really prolong the life of your strings too. But that's it for me today, going over some just extremely simple carrying tips and tricks for cleaning your bass and making sure that our tools last as long as possible. It's one of those things where we gotta to take care of our instruments because you know they sound great we love playing them and everything but you have to keep up with them to make sure that they're at their best working level too but let us know in the comments below what tips tricks and products y'all use to make sure that your bases are in their best working order and as clean as possible too thank y'all so much for watching as always and we'll see y'all next time